Our next speaker is Yati Jonet. And uh, Yati and I were, were talking this morning, uh, and I'd asked her if she'd been to North America before, and she said no. Um, and she said, kind of under her breath, that um, you know the food in Montreal is like, eh. She said, you haven't eaten until you've been to Malaysia, so I'm going to Malaysia. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Yati is with the Malaysian AIDS Council in Kuala Lumpur, and today she's going to share her experience as an outspoken advocate and source of support for people who use drugs in Malaysia. Welcome, Yati. I guess I'm the only one who is presenting and standing here. I just want to tell everybody that I'm nervous. Please be with me until the end of my speech. Thank you. I would like to thank the harm reduction organizers for inviting me in this esteemed plenary session to share about my personal experience as a drug user in Malaysia. I am Yati Jonit, 42 years old, currently working at Malaysian States Council for People Who Inject Drugs Case Management Approach. Previously, as an outreach worker, oh yeah, let's, let's introduce Malaysia to everybody. Okay. The population is 31 million. 13 states and three federal territories, multicultural, multi ethnic, and good food. <laughs> 66, uh, 66 largest country, 44th most populous country in the world. I know some of you have been there during the last years in the harm reduction conference at Kuala Lumpur, and yeah, the food is good. Uh, okay, let me introduce myself. I am Yati Jonet, 42 years old, currently working at Malaysian Sex Council for people who inject drugs for case management approach for people who inject drugs. Previously, as an outreach worker for Needle Sharing Exchange Program at sub-recipient level, later appointed as program manager on the ground in the Needle Sharing Exchange Program until last year, I worked at principal recipient level at a program management unit focal point for people who inject drugs. To be frank, I am a drug user. I am a woman who use drugs in Malaysia. Being in prison and rehab center for several times while I'm active using. I was first introduced in the program, harm reduction program as an outreach worker, where I am proud to say that the logo there, the, the umbrella NGO, the Malaysian States Council, is the one who is polishing me up, who helped me up through my years, recovery years, until now. Through that many years in the ground, I've seen so many things. I've seen people who use drugs die. I've seen them got on treatment. I've seen some of them survive. People who use drugs live under the bridge. Families tearing apart. Going in and out from rehab centers and pri prisons for so many times. I stand before everyone here today, not only to share about my personal experience, but to talk about those people who struggle in their life. These are my friends, and everybody who struggled with their lives, battling with drug addictions, to have some space to breathe. And it's all related to me as a drug user throughout my life. 
One cause that driving me to stay in this line of work, and it's always close to my heart, is issues around women who use drugs. I participated in several focus group discussion on gender-based violence sessions for women who use drugs, most of them a very close friends of mine. Facing gender-based violence from partners also in prison, women were treated badly just because they are using drugs. They are forced to squat and stick their finger in their vagina to prove that they are not hiding any drugs and bring them in the prison. That is what's happening. Clearly, I can see something is wrong in the system as most of my friends whom, my fr whom I met from the last 10 years still going in and out from the rehabs and prison. The war on drug and actions. I strongly believe all this punity approach would not help my friends in their rehab or recovery process. But it will only make my drug user's friend becoming worse. My friends out there in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia specifically, in the Philippines especially, needs a holistic support and help to be productive like myself today, not continuously punishing as a drug user. Punitive and compulsory based approach will lead to various health issues such as HIV, hepatitis C, TB, and other chronic illnesses. I'm proudly, I, I, I'm so proud to, to tell you all we have our own national strategic, strategic plan ending AIDS by 2030. Prepared by Ministry of Health, together with various stakeholders, lays out a comprehensive activities and plans to help people who use drugs to be on treatment. We have a very good primary health, primary health care clinics which provides free antiretroviral treatment, free opiate substitution treatment for people who use drugs. We NGOs work closely with the government-funded needle sharing exchange program and case management project is funded by the Global Fund where we refer most, uh, most of our people who inject drugs to, to treatment, to ART and OST treatment. However, the war on drugs again posted a major risk to the success of National Strategic Plan Ending AIDS by 2030, where we and I can see people who use drugs on ART treatment being caught and sentenced to their jail times. This will give impact to their life, which also risking their life. Moving forward, people at every level, community members, NGOs, policy makers, government, to work hand in hand towards achieving the same goal, which is to provide life to people who use drugs with dignity. On that note, I urge the international community to support people who use drugs like myself to have equal opportunity and better quality of life, whether in health and well-being. My name is Harriet Jonet, and I am Women Who Use Drugs. Thank you.